Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video what we're going to be going over is creating a basic damaging and healing system for your player within your game. So I'm doing this based upon a previous video which I've created in which what we did if I press play you can see we've now got a health bar in the bottom left hand corner which does actually work according to our health as well. So in that video I asked if you wanted to see a damaging and healing system and a lot of people said that they would love to see that so that's what I'm creating today. So you don't need to follow that video if you haven't seen already however if you do want to follow it it would be great because then again you will get the health bar which you see on the screen now. But without further ado let me actually show you what we're going to be going over and creating today. So if I were to press 1 I can heal and you can hear we get a sound effect as well and that's going to have different sound effects so it will play a random one. I've only got two different ones but you can add as many as you like. And to damage the player all I'm going to do is walk into a box here and it's going to be the red one and that will then damage the player once again with random sound effects. And I can damage and heal like so and if I to go all the way down to zero health the player will die. Now I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. No! So the player died you heard a very strange sound effect there but don't worry about that. I can still move about obviously nothing visual actually happened however I can no longer take damage and I can no longer heal so it does actually work in the sense of the player is now dead they can't do anything however they can obviously still move about and do everything else like that that is because in the next video I'm going to be going over a proper death system so that would be death and respawning which I'll go over in the next video but as you can see here the damaging healing system stops working once the player dies because obviously you don't want them to keep taking damage and you don't want them to heal so again I'll be going over that in the next video so this is what we're going to be going over and creating today so without further ado let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our character blueprint as that is where we're going to be doing the majority of this code. So I'm going to hit control space to open up my content browser, go to third person, blueprints, BP, third person character, however this can be in the third person, first person or whatever you've named it. Once we're in here what you can see is I've already got this base code here for creating the health widget and putting it on screen. We're going to ignore that because again we've already done that. So what we're going to start off with first is damaging the player. So what we're going to do is find some empty space, right click and get event any damage as we're going to be using the engine's built in apply damage nodes. After this we're going to hit the plus variable naming this one is dead question mark and leaving that as a boolean compiling it with a default value of false because we obviously don't want to be doing this code if the player is dead. So first things first we're going to hold control drag in that boolean to get it. Out of this we're going to get a not boolean, not a not equal sorry, a not boolean. That way it's going to inverse it so if is dead is true it will be a not which means this will be false. The reason why I'm doing that is because we're going to then hold down B and left click to get a branch connecting that into the event any damage and the not being the condition. So if the player is not dead we're going to come off with true meaning we will do this code. I'm just doing that because it just looks a little bit nicer coming off of true instead of false, that's just personal preference. But basically if the player is not dead we will do the code to damage them. Now actually damaging them we obviously want to set the health. So we're going to hold down alt and drag in the health to set off of true there. But what are we going to set the health to? Well that's very simple. What we can do is hold control and drag to get the health and we want to just do health minus damage that is going to be in this event any damage node. So we'll drag out of the health and get a subtract node with the bottom value being the damage from the event any damage and the top value being the health which we just got it from. And then this subtract, the value of it wants to go into a clamp, that clamp just being a float like so. And I'm just going to move these down a little bit like this. Now the minimum value for this wants to be zero so the health will not go below zero. And the maximum value doesn't matter too much but we're going to put it as our max health. And again the main one is the minimum being zero so the health is not going to go below the value of zero and this return value here is then going to go into our set health so that is what the value is going to be for our new health it'll be our current health minus the damage making sure it doesn't go below zero and that's our new health and now if you followed what i did in the previous video you might need to do this as well so the way i'm updating my health on the widget is i'm actually setting it in the widget so if i get my reference to my widget here drag out of this and do set health like so. I'm just going to set that to the health which we just set up here. Now again if you've not got it set up that way don't worry. If you've just got it set up as a normal binding so it's going to be using the health from the player character 
you don't need to worry about that. But if you did what I did at the end of that previous video, then you'll probably want to do this as well. So again, this part here is optional. But after this, we want to drag out of our set health, either one is fine, and get an equal equal operator like so. And we're going to leave the value as zero, because we now want to just check to see if the player is dead. If their health is equal to zero, they're obviously dead. So we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, with that being the condition like so. So true means the player is dead, false means the player isn't dead, they've just taken damage. So we'll do false first. What I'm going to do is play a sound 2D. Now you can do at location if you want, but I think 2D sounds better for this kind of system. It's just down to personal preference really. But if you do do at location, make sure you put the location as the player, so just do get at location. For the sound of this, I'm going to use my damage cue, and I'll go over setting up in a second and a moment's time. Sorry if I've not done that just yet. I'll go over that in a minute. And we don't need to do anything else after this. Off of true, what we're going to do is again play sound 2D or at location, whichever one you are using. And the sound for this is going to be just my death sound. I've not done a cue for that one as I've only got one sound effect, so you choose which one you want to do. Then we obviously just want to set the boolean of is dead making sure we are setting it to true, so ticking it like so. And again, in the next video, I'm gonna go over doing some proper death code here. So we can do ragdoll or a normal animation and respawning anything that you want. And we will compile and save that like so. And so now we've got our damage system set up. So I'm gonna select that, hit C to comment it, naming it damage system like so. That makes sense for me. And now I'm gonna very quickly go over the audio which I've just created. So I'll compile and save, minimize this and just find the sound effect which I've got. So what I've done is I've imported all the sound effects I want. So that's damage one, damage two, no! death, healing one, and healing two. Those are all the sound effects which I have. Then you can right click, go to sounds, create a sound cue, giving it the name of which you want. So for example, damage cue. Open that up straight away, drag in all your sound effects which you want in there, and just put them into a random node. This means it will then just play a random sound effect. Now, since I only have two in here, it's a 50-50 chance, so it is just basically gonna be going between these two, like so. So obviously the more sounds you have, the less repetitive it will be and the better it will sound. But again, just as this is for the purpose of the tutorial, I just did two just to show you it working with random and multiple sound effects. So we'll close that and just do that for all the sounds which you have. And so now we're going to work on the healing system. And so now we're going to minimize this again. And what we're going to do is actually now damage the player. So this is receiving damage, but we need to actually also apply damage. So minimize this and just go into the blueprint which you have for damaging the player. So this could be an enemy AI or anything you want. Again, for me, I'm just doing it based upon a cube here. So open up the actor which you have. Again, for me, this is just a cube with a box collision around it just so the player can actually overlap it. Then we're going to go to the event graph and this is where you want to decide how it's going to damage the player. So if it's an AI you might want it to attack the player or if you're just doing a cube like me you might want it to be when the player overlaps it. If it's overlap we're going to right click the box, add event and add on component to begin overlap. And this is really the only difference we're going to have. For me it's an overlap for you, it might be something else. Obviously, I can't cover absolutely everything because there's endless possibilities, but do what you want to damage the player. Then to actually apply that damage, what you want to do is get an apply damage node where the damaged actor needs to be a reference to the player. So you can decide how you want to do that. For me, that is going to be the other actor of the begin overlap as it is going to damage the actor which has overlapped the box collision. So for me, that's obviously going to be the player. And the reason why I'm doing this instead of just a cast to the player is because let's say I have other AI in the level. If they overlap the box, I want them to be damaged instead of the player. So I hope that makes sense. And the base damage here, I'm just gonna set as 15. You can give this a random value if you want. So you can just do random float like so, or if, or if we were to do random float in range, we can let's say do between 10 and 15. Now what you might want to do is a random integer and then convert that to a float because at the moment this can be 10, 10.1, 10.2, 10.3, all the way up to 15. Whereas if it's a random integer, it will be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So do whichever one you want. For me, a random float will be fine. What you can also do is do the damage causer. 
So we'll drag out this and get a reference to self. That essentially just gives more information to the player to say that it's this blueprint which damaged the player. So if we go here, you can get the damage causer there. You don't need to worry about that too much if you don't want to set that up. I don't personally use that a whole lot, but you can basically just see what damaged the player. It's just nice and easy to do. And this is all we need to do in here. So this is now actually going to damage the player because it's going to apply damage here, which will then cause the event any damage to fire off, which will then actually do all of this code here. And obviously in here, you can do a sound effect as well if you wanted. So if this was to make a sound effect when it damages something, just place that in here afterwards as well. And so now we're going to close this and now we're going to set up the healing system. So that's also nice and simple. Once again, we're going to go back to the character blueprint and set this up. And mine might be a little different to yours because you're going to want to make sure you just do this for how you want the player to heal. So this might be by drinking something, by walking into something or anything you want. For me, I'm just going to do it off, off of pressing the one keyboard event because that's nice and simple for me for the purpose of the tutorial. And it's very easy to then add on to later on. So what I might do as well actually is do this in a custom event so I can call it from multiple different places. So in the character blueprint, we're going to right click, add a custom event naming this heal player and I'm going to add an input on here of heal value for example giving this a float variable and we're going to compile and save that straight away out of here what we're going to do is hold down B left click to get a branch because again we want to make sure that the player isn't dead they need to be alive and we also want to make sure they haven't got a maximum amount of health because if they've got the max health we don't want them to keep on healing so very simply, we can get the boolean of is dead like so, drag out and get a not boolean once again. So if the player is not dead, and then we want to drag out of this, and instead of going straight into the branch, we want to get an and boolean, because we want to make sure that this and something else is true. And like I said earlier, that something else is making sure that their health isn't full. So we're going to drag in a reference to the health, out of this get a not equal to, which is an exclamation mark equal, and this is going to go into the and and the bottom value of this is going to be our max health variable which we created in the previous episode as well so if the player is not dead and their health is not equal to their max health connect that into the condition we can then heal so now let's do the healing code once again we want to hold down alt drag in our health to set the health off of true of the branch but again what is going to be our new health value well if we drag in a reference to health here out of this get an addition node or an add and we're going to add our heal value from our custom event so I might just move those like that instead this is again going to go into a clamp float similarly to how we did it for the damage system minimum of zero maximum this is the important one of our max health so it's not going to go above our max health so you might be wondering why we did this as well because even if the player continues healing once they're at full health it won't go above their maximum health, but it will still play the sound effect, which we obviously don't want. And let's say you're using something, so you're drinking an energy drink, for example, to heal the player, it will continue consuming those drinks even though it's not healing the player, which you obviously don't want to do because that would then be a waste. So that's why we're doing both of these here. And this return value is gonna go into the set health like so, with that now being our new health. And again, I need to set this in my health widget just to make sure that it is updating on screen as well for the player to be able to see like so. Then after this, all I'm gonna do is play sound at 2D to once again play a sound effect to also signify to the player that they have healed like so. I'm gonna select this, hit C to comment it, naming this healing system. And I'm gonna compile and save that. And as I said earlier, I'm gonna get the one keyboard event and this is going to be how I heal the player. And I'm going to give it a heal value of 10. So we can compile and save that. And you can call this custom event from anywhere you want. So it can be an external blueprint. You just cast a player, call function, heal player. Or it can be when you drink something, when you eat something, whatever you want, however you want to set it up, just call this function here. So now we can minimize this and hit play to test it out. If I had to press one, we get a sound effect, our health has gone up. And we can continue doing that until we reach our max health. I'm still pressing one, nothing's happening. If I were to walk into this cube, we're gonna take damage with a sound effect and our health is going down, and then we can once again heal like so. 
and if it goes all the way down to zero health we should then end up with the sound effect of dying no! like so and we can no longer take damage and we can no longer heal so that then works perfectly for us so I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do we've set up a system which we can damage the player and we can heal the player and if we also take enough damage the player is going to die which again we are going to advance upon in the next no! video in the next episode so thanks so much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one